and I feel like I can get through probably about 10 minutes tonight. Amen. So y'all just pray my strength in the Lord. You know what they say? Huh? Amen. I don't have a handout for you tonight, but I'm going to encourage you to take notes if you can. If you, uh, I, I would hope that you, you know, I know lots of you got phones and stuff and iPads and everything because I had to go and change the, change the password on the internet uh, because we were unable to broadcast anymore because too many folks was using it. So, uh, amen. You won't be now. Knock him out, John. Amen. Uh, but uh, we're going to just keep moving forward. We've been teaching for, I don't know, several weeks on holiness. I probably should have kept track of it. But uh, uh, there are a couple of more issues of holiness that I want to deal with. Uh, with one of the primary ones being entertainment. We need to make sure we choose holy entertainment. Amen. Amen. Y'all got to help a brother out tonight. I know it's in the hot summertime, but I don't know what's wrong with me. Amen. I uh, I uh, I feel like the, I wake up every morning with a cold, and that's not good in the summertime. But uh, amen. It ain't going to keep down a good fellow. That ain't no mountain for a climber. Amen. I, I want to talk to you tonight about a call to spiritual growth a call to spiritual growth uh first peter chapter one back in october i did about a three-week series on first peter uh some of this will be uh, uh, a review possibly and then we will move over into chapter number two and um I don't know how far I'll get tonight, but we may move. We may move a little bit further into it on uh, in the ensuing Wednesdays. We'll just have to see. But the Bible says in verse number twenty-two: "Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth." There's a lot of teaching that I could do right here. You are not saved unless you are obedient to the Word of God. You're not purified, Brother Robbie, without being obedient to the Word of God. There is a plan for purification. Purifying your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. So let's start with the first word. He says, this is Peter, this is Simon Peter, the day of Pentecost, Simon Peter, the one that has the keys to the kingdom, the one that denied the Lord, the one that gave us Acts chapter 2, verse number 14 through verse number 40 or so, and then First and Second Peter, he's the author of the letters that bear his name. And he says, seeing ye have purified your souls. It means that what he's talking about has already happened. It has already taken place. So it is kind of like, and I've got this in my notes, and sometimes I'm just goofy while I, while I begin to write this stuff down, but it's bam, what happens at conversion. When you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you have been given a completely fresh start. You have been given a fresh start. And your soul has been purified. Which is the mind. It's your intellect. That's what your soul is. It is your will. It is the emotions that are in you that are ruled by your five senses. And it is, it is, uh, uh, occurs if and when you are obedient to the truth. Now this is plain in the scriptures here and I know many people in the religious world will try to uh, um, uh, um, define the, the moment of salvation in a different manner. But according to the Bible, your soul, your, your being, who you are, it's not necessarily your body because we are made up of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. But your soul is, is the one that is governed by your senses, by your will, and by your emotions. And it is purified when you obey the truth. Amen? Amen. And it occurs, I want you to see, I'm going to see if I can, if I can bring this out tonight in, in a way that is, 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 uh, the, the way that it's running through my mind. The soul is purified when the truth is obeyed through the Spirit. 
So it is not something that just anybody can decide to do, Brother David, but it is something that occurs under the influence or, or through the power of the Spirit. Okay, when you obey the truth, then you are filled with the Spirit, and it's the Spirit that rebirths you, as it were, or begotten you again, according to another place, uh, where you are born again of the water and of the Spirit, you are changed, and that is when the truth is obeyed, that's what happens. Now, I want so uh, so badly tonight, for just a, a, a short moment in time, to, to, to let you know that it, it truly is that easy to receive receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now I have been uh, uh, approached, not directly, for whatever reason. Uh, oftentimes, Brother David, I have to hear things second or third when people are curious. I have to hear it second or third hand. But people say, I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying to get the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. Did you see? I'm not sure if we're alive tonight, but did you did you read in the in the newspaper or on the internet in the last couple of weeks where the Southern Baptist Convention has now agreed that it's all right to talk in tongues? Anybody see that? Yeah, it was in the news recently. People are leaning more and more toward an experience that changes you. Just saying, I believe, or uh, somebody put across my news feed today, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in Scripture does it say, accept Jesus as your personal Savior and you're saved. It's not in the Bible. Okay? And people are leaning more and more toward a supernatural encounter that in fact changes them. Because we realize, I think, uh, um, um, I, I was talking to uh, um, Danny Robinson last night at the ballpark, and, and he was he, he and his wife, Barb, you know, have been coming to church on Sunday mornings, and, and uh, he's telling me about going and visiting a relative, and uh, he explained to him, is an older gentleman down in Arkansas, and a, a relative of his wife, who, who uh, by the way, Barb's mother is the longest attending member of Brother McDougal's church in Sykeston. She's 99. 92 years old and she's the longest attending member so there is a connection there but uh, we, we have got to uh, um, uh, understand as, as Danny was telling me that, that this older gentleman is 96 years old or so that this older gentleman was telling him the reason why Jesus had to come is because we could not do it by ourselves now that's that's a, maybe a little bit of an oversimplification, but if it has to be, you we've got to realize I can't just say I believe and all of a sudden everything's fixed. But I have got to obey, and there's something that takes place when I obey the truth. Again, without for the sake of oversimplification, John chapter 17, you don't have to turn it there, but John chapter 17, verse number 17 says that thy word is truth. So the entire body of truths that make up the word of God, we have an obligation to be obedient to. And when we're obedient to the truth, then, it's then and only then we become purified through the Spirit. I don't know about you, but that excites me to know that I don't have to try to do it by myself. But if we realize that and we understand that, that it happens through the Spirit, then why do we try so hard to establish our own righteousness? Why do we try so hard to establish our own righteousness and then when we fail, we feel like all is gone? All is lost. Can I get an amen? Maybe nobody feels that way. But look here. So, seeing that ye have purified. Now let's, let's review just a little bit. Um, I, I don't want to blow your theologies out. But are you aware that for the most part, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John fit in the Old Testament? They were still, Brother David, governed by the same standards of the Old Testament up through Calvary. Okay? But in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we learn about the life of Jesus Christ. We learn who Jesus was, what He did, what He came for. In the book of Acts, you learn how to get saved. 
It's when Jesus is gone, he shed forth his spirit. The, the, the original 11 disciples plus Matthias who was picked to be the 12th one are in the upper room with Mary the mother of Jesus and his brethren, about 120 folks, and they're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And according to Luke chapter number 24, Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter number 16, and even Acts chapter number 1, that is the foundation, that is the beginning because in Acts chapter number 11, Brother Terry, Peter tells the Jews who are upset that Cornelius the Gentile got the Holy Ghost for we, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. So the beginning is the day of Pentecost. That is the birth of the New Testament church. So you learn how to get saved in the book of Acts and then the book of Romans through the book of Jude and including Revelation, if you really want to be technical about it, is letters that are written to people that are already Holy Ghost filled. And that is very important. Because as you see here in verse number 22, he is says, seeing that ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Look here. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Anybody like to explain to me what just happened there between the beginning of that and the end? All right, let's, let's go through it. Try not to get caught up in so much that I'm talking. Let's read the Word of God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Comma. So what are we talking about there? They, they have, now think about this. They have already received the Holy Ghost. Peter is reviewing what happened to them. Do you see? Have purified is in the, the past tense. Okay, he's speaking to people whose souls have already been purified. Okay, unto unfeigned, which simply means unhidden. Love of the brethren. So, just keep that in mind. Are we, do we understand that all the way down to brethren, he is reiterating, reminding them of what has happened in their life? Do you, does anybody not see that? Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. I'm aware it is happening. It is a fact that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Unto unhidden love of the brethren. So when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, as the old song says, makes me... Love everybody makes me so the, the 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 goal of the Holy Ghost is for the love of God to be shed abroad in our hearts, meaning flow through us. It's the love of God. But then he says, See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So am I being clear? Because I feel like So here's what's happening. The beginning, this is why you got the Holy Ghost. This is what the Spirit's doing in your life. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. What's he saying? Start doing it. This is what you got the Holy Ghost for. Now do it. Do you see that? Okay. That denotes the next step. Fulfilling the purpose of discipleship for the reason of identification as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Look, John 13. I didn't give you this and I'm sorry. Hope you can quickly get it up there if you can't. They should be following along in their Bible anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment. I'm not going to get into the deal about a new commandment, but it, it's just a new way of giving it. It's a new way of doing it. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. Look here. 
By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So you're purified through obedience to the truth through the Spirit unto unhidden open love of the brethren. So see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently because the identifying characteristic of a disciple of Jesus Christ is that you love one another. So, if you've got the Holy Ghost and you're having problems loving folks, you need to get on your face. Because if you're not loving people, you don't love Him. Period. Now I'm about to I know we like that we like to justify our behavior. But there's a reason. Oh God have mercy. Think about it just for a minute. Boy, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost now. Think about it just for a minute. He told the, the Pharisees, he said, You love them that love you. Everybody does that. Anybody and everybody does that. But if it ain't just anybody fall out of a tree and love folks that don't love them back. You cannot do that within yourself. A little bitty baby who's freshly born will not do that. They may for a time, but you think about it. You, you keep slapping the dog that comes around directly, he ain't coming around no more. But our children, they don't just naturally love you because they came out of you. They love you because you nurture them, you comfort them, you hold them, you protect them. We have got to begin to love people like Jesus did. And the only way you can do that is through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The only way you can do that or you and I can do that is under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Think about it just for a minute. I thought of this. I can remember it happening in my life. I got a little carnal in my thinking. I know that's a surprise to some of you, but it happens from time to time. And I was praying the blessing of uh, ingrown toenails on somebody. You know, Lord bless them with, with both toes ingrown. Or I'm being facetious a little bit, but somebody that you don't care for gets what they got coming. But when you got the Holy Ghost, you want to be really happy that it happened. But that ain't what you're feeling. You can't wait. I, I can't wait till they get it. I can't wait till they get it. I can't wait till they get it. And then, Brother Chris, when they get it, man, I'm supposed to be happy, not feel sorry for him. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce you to the influence of the Holy Ghost? What, what's Jesus hanging on the cross? Peter is carnally minded and in the garden he takes out his sword and cuts off an old boy's ear. And I've said this before, he wasn't aiming for his ear. He had designs on taking it off. Jesus, Jesus gets down on the ground, picks his ear up, Puts it back on his head, heals him, and then gets on to the one. I don't need that kind of help. That's what he said to him. I don't need that kind of help. If I want out of this, I call 12 legions of angels down. So he let him spit on him, let him slap him, let him stab him, let him do all kinds of crazy stuff, cram thorns down, make fun of him and ridicule him, which the Bible tells us that's the only thing he despised out of it was the shame. Hebrews chapter number 12. And then he's hanging on the cross. I'm talking about the love of God makes you a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's hanging on the cross and says, 
Would you forgive them? Because they don't even really know what they're doing. That's love, ladies and gentlemen. It's love. That when they're walking by, and, and, and I know some of you may have seen the movie The Passion of Christ. I've never seen it. Don't have intent. Hollywood's not going to determine for me what the crucifixion was. But they didn't even get it right. It was worse than anybody's mind can imagine. As he hung there naked. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the Master of all glory. Hung there naked. And some of his dying words were to forgive those that had made him that way. But you see, you, my God help me. Brother David, you can't have it any other way. If it's the Spirit of God that we have, then we have to behave as Jesus did. That's what our goal is. That's what we're shooting for. Verse 23 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, which is a seed that is born to die, as is everything that's in the earth. Everything that is earthly will die. We're not born again of corruptible seed. We're not born again of a relationship with a preacher or a pastor or somebody we go and talk to in a cubbyhole a couple of times a week. We're not born again by shaking anybody's hand or repeating anybody's prayer. We're born again of incorruptible seed. Next verse. By the Word of God. That's why sometimes we get folks in a hurry. But the Bible tells us that the Word of God is the seed. And that's what we're born again by. It's not corruptible. It's not man-made. I know King James is the one that, that translated this in 1611, I believe it was, Brother Robbie. But that's not a man-made. The Bible says, and I'm going to talk on it in a minute, but all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. He's the author of that book. There, there are several writers, but there's one author. And it is that Word that you hear. You hear that word and it does something to your heart. It does something to your mind. And you've got two options. You can respond to it or you turn your back on it and walk away. It's given to us very plainly the parable of the seed and the sower. Brother David, one of the only parables that Jesus Christ broke it down step by step and says plainly the seed is the word of God. And some of it will fall on good ground. That's one of the hardest things for me to grasp a hold of as a pastor. It's, and I talked about it at the men's rally the other night. But when we preach, we want to fix everybody. I said, when we preach, we want to fix everybody. But the Bible says some falls by the wayside. Some falls among the thorns. Some falls on stony ground. And some falls on good ground. It's that seed that falls on good ground that gives birth to a new life which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 24, For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. I drive up and down 61 Highway quite often. And I, I look at the crops, Brother Billy, going up and coming back throughout the seasons. There is nothing prettier, nothing prettier in my estimation than a, a wheat field just coming up. About yay high. Brother Billy, how pretty is it? Green and rich and... But as it grows and it grows and it grows and it gets taller and then it looks real pretty and tall and green and then it starts turning. And all of it, everything they plant every year, we sort of kind of judge our times by the, the growing season. Everything that you plant is going to grow up, wither, and die. So we put so much stock in so many things that, that don't amount to nothing. Don't amount to anything. I thought of somebody. I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Never mind. But we put so much, you know, 
man, I, I hate to do this, but, you know, there was a deal going around for a while where you, you could put your lips down into some kind of deal and suck in real hard and, and make them get big old fat gorilla lips. And that was, that was cool for a while. We put so much, but I, I know that sounds comical. It, it, it's comical to look at if you really think about it. But because somebody famous did it, it's all of a sudden cool. But you put so much effort and so much energy into beautifying the outside of the vessel. But it's going to fade. It's going to go away. I don't care how, you know, I, 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 I said I was yesterday and I was talking to somebody and God is my witness, Sister Maria. I got about three quarters of the way through it and forgot everything I was talking about. So, guess what? It's going to happen to every one of us. Because it's our glory. Your looks, your mind. And it fades. But it's that spirit that you get. It's that spirit that keeps on living. It's the spirit of God because our flesh, the glory of man, fame, fortune, finances, beauty, etc. It, it withereth. The flower falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Chapter 2 and verse number 1. We started a little early tonight. I was going to try to let you go maybe a little bit early tonight. but Chapter 2 and verse number 1. Peter just reviewed... The receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Born again of the Word of God. Established in the Word of God. Then verse number 1. This is where we get our thought from. If you have the Apostolic Study Bible, you'll see that it says a call to spiritual growth. Wherefore, laying aside... That means getting rid of all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Somebody say he's remember. Say remember, remember. He's talking to church folks. Wherefore? To think about it. The foundation. We, we got to be saved, okay? And the Holy Ghost is going to take us to heaven. But there are two commandments that we are to fulfill here on earth. Love the Lord with everything we got in us and love everybody else. I feel like I'm pulling teeth tonight. Some of y'all's faces look like I'm pulling teeth tonight. <laughs> Y'all think it's tough in here. Y'all try to preach in this kind of deal. I might ask Sister Jamie if she wants to in a minute. You know, you know I will. Brother Billy. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it, it changed their life, Brother Billy. They went from cursing, lying, cheating, temperamental, to when he walked up to the cross, he asked him to hang him upside down because he wasn't worthy to be crucified like the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost is what made the difference in the disciples. I was getting at, you know, a lot of times we want somebody to be right in the And here he's still talking to people five years. Oh, uh, yeah. I follow you now. Absolutely. He's still talking about the application of the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost is supposed to be doing in your life. I didn't follow you there for a minute. I, we had two lines of thinking going. I told you I was getting old. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So wherefore simply means reflecting upon the new birth as the beginning 
And this, verse number one, is speaking of the responsibilities that follow the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because, and this is a misnomer, you, you 